My name's Linda, uh, and I'm a, <clears throat> I've been a teacher with Native Camp for over two years now, but I've been teaching. English, the foreign language for about 11 years. Um, I'm based in North Yorkshire, in the north of England, but I'm originally from Scotland. Hi, I'm Flynn, and I'm from London in England, and I, I live in the Philippines now, but currently I'm back in England for summer, and now I live in Brighton. I've been with Native Camp for also around two years, I think, maybe. So uh, my name is Ryan, I'm 28. And I now, well, I was living in Thailand and teaching English in Thailand. Um, and then before that, I was living in Switzerland. And that's when I found Native Camp. And uh, that was like two thousand, so maybe three years, three years with Native Camp. Um, and uh, now I'm, I'm just like, I live in Serbia and I like work remotely from home doing many different things, not just teaching, but like um, I, I play a lot of music and I do uh, like sound effects for games and apps and you know, all that that boring stuff. Um, so yeah, I actually go to England as well. So I'm from Cornwall, like right down the very bottom of England. So I go home uh, in like 10 days and then I have to leave for like three months and then I come back. So yeah, I'm like, I'm the same. I, I live in another country. So in terms of common characteristics uh, of students, uh, I've noticed that the students that, I, that come to my classes uh, are very motivated, very hard working and take regular lessons. Um, you know, every day and sometimes, you know, several lessons every day. They're, they're, um, they're super motivated to learn English and are particularly interested in the British English, which is why they come to a British teacher's class. How do you find that, Ryan? Um, so I, I agree with you. I think um, a lot of the students uh, in that want to learn British English, I mean, normally they kind of struggle at first because of the accent and their, uh, I guess, American English is a lot more common. Um, but the, the good thing about those kind of students is that they always ask questions and that's what you should always do, like always want to know why. And with those kind of, uh, at that level, they always ask me like, oh, what does this mean? And what does that mean? And how, and they always kind of go the extra mile, which is what you want uh, yeah. in your students, of course. Amazing. Um, what about you? What about Flynn though? Have you, have you got any different experiences? Most of the students that are really high level English and it's very difficult to find any fault at all, maybe one or two in a whole lesson, yeah. they're, they're always very, very consistent. You know, they have lessons twice a day, four times, however many times, but there's very, always a certain amount of time. I also notice that um, people who come to a native speakers class are often really shy. They uh, apologize for their English and they apologize for the level of their English. And then we have a conversation about politics and art and culture and literature. And, and so they, they, that uh, shyness and um, sort of self-deprecating is, I think is, um, it, they get over that eventually. And it's part of our job as teachers, I think, to make them feel comfortable and make them realize. I, the way that I usually do that is by explaining that I don't speak Japanese, I'm learning Japanese. And I find it very frustrating that I can't express myself easily uh, in, a, in a foreign language. I, I speak French, but obviously Japanese is new to me. And I find that usually helps because then we're on the same level. <laughs> we're both language learners. How, how do you find it, uh, Ryan? Um. I think like with, with some students, like because of my character, like how I am, um, I think um, I've seen a lot of interviews with teachers and they're always like very, like very together, very, you know, strict in, in some kind of manner. But I'm very much like, you know, I'm very ditzy and, and like I move about a lot. And like if they make a mistake, I'm very much like whatever, like who cares and make them feel comfortable because it's just a, like it's not <laughs> like. If, I think sometimes with Japanese people, maybe if with anybody who is learning another language, it feels like the end of the world. Like when they get something wrong, they're like, oh no, but yeah, it doesn't embarrassed. Yeah. Who cares? I don't care. Like, and it's just me and the student. So who cares? What about you, Flynn? <laughs> uh, I completely agree. I, I say it's actually good to make mistakes. 
Cool. So if, like what, what you said, Linda, that some, someone's embarrassed to make a mistake, I say it's a great thing because then we can talk about it. You can improve. If you don't make mistakes, then you won't improve. So mm-hmm. it's actually a good thing to make mistakes. So don't be embarrassed at all. You know, just mm-hmm. everyone does it. But you, the, all of us talking on this call probably make mistakes at some point. Yeah. You know, everyone's human. So yeah. Yeah. even in your native language, you make mistakes. So it's fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and it's making students feel comfortable. What, what you were saying, Ryan, about just being yourself, being relaxed. What I try to do is talk to them as if I was as if they were in the, here in the room with me. Um, yeah. The same way that I would talk to anybody else, the same way that I would talk to you is, is trying to engage and communicate um, and, and to put them at their ease because they'll learn better if they're comfortable and relaxed. I know I do. If I'm uptight and bent, I forget things. If I'm relaxed, I, I retain the information better. So um, I, that's, I think that's uh, a, an important part of teaching is to make students feel comfortable and relaxed and not foolish if they make mistakes. Should we move on to the, the next one now or is it too soon? Um, so in terms of the sort of habits and ideas that about learning um, that might be changed, I think Japanese students particularly, but Asian students generally, are so um, determined to do well. They're sort of motivated from childhood to study, 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 achieve, achieve, achieve. And so I think some students work too hard. You know, I noticed that um, some students will take maybe seven or eight lessons a day particularly during the pandemic because they had nobody else to talk to. So it was nice to be able to sit and talk to one of your teachers. But I'm not sure in terms of learning um, how how useful that is. Um, I, I feel that if you, you study too much in a day, your brain gets tired. Your brain needs time to process its new information. And if you spend too long studying, I think you become overtired. So I think short, sharp bursts is better than really long, intense, um, sessions it's uh, in whatever subject but particularly when you're learning a foreign language how do you feel Flynn? I completely agree I've got some students that take sometimes four lessons in a row just with me yeah. and then they, they say oh I've got five more and I, I would say that's great but it could be too much you know because your brain gets fried if you're doing anything for too long if you're <laughs> staring at a screen for longer than two hours or talking for two hours you know your brain drops and it's not quite at the level it could be so i yeah, yeah. completely agree uh, and another a point i had about things that could be changed um was what we actually said before was it's okay to make mistakes that's something that it could be changed to learn english so um yeah same as what you said and another one was translating so um it, it's i i understand completely why someone would do it but in, in this scenario, let's say Japanese to English, if it's a Japanese speaker, it would be best to try, if you can, don't translate in your head from Japanese to English. <laughs> try just go directly to English, because if you translate from any language, it doesn't convert very well. You know, maybe the order's mixed up or something. So yeah. if you can, try try to just think straight away in English instead of going Japanese. Okay, what's that in English? And then saying it so I, I've yeah. done that before you can hear a student typing and they can't think of the yeah. word you can hear them typing that you're googling it stop yeah you know, <laughs> try and think of a different way to say it just try a different yeah. way don't worry about saying it that way find another way of saying it um and I think yeah. that's that's really important what about you Ryan I think you guys are saying about the the positive kind of student that really want to get stuck in and learn and go like so those are the kind of students like that will take loads of lessons and, and like that but then there are also some students who you know they take maybe one lesson and then they expect to like be fluent in that 25 minute lesson you know so um it's another like it's good that people take loads of lessons of course like i i agree like it does have the brain and you really should only maybe two lessons is is definitely enough like um but then some students they they will take one lesson and then they don't really, you know, go go much further with it. They they think uh, I'm trying to, <clears throat> trying to think of the word. Like they they're very shy with with how they like. Let's say let's do an example. 
Um, wait, hang on. Can we just edit this out? This is... <laughs> this, I'm telling you. <laughs> like, we can edit all of this out. This is okay. Um, so they'll, they'll take a lesson. And then for the rest of the week, they won't take a lesson. And um, you always ask these, these students, oh, have you, been, have you been doing anything to help with your English? And they always kind of say no. And like, I, I think, you know, one time I was kind of learning German and uh, I, had, I wasn't speaking German every day because I didn't want to do it. So it's kind of, you guys are speaking about these students that are really good, but yeah. I've had students that just don't really care. You know, they kind of <clears throat> just have one lesson and that's good enough for them. It's kind of just a way to have a conversation, like mm-hmm. talk. That, that, that's kind of what I've been getting so far. <laughs> I haven't had like five bookings in a row. Have you had five bookings in a row? Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. I've, had a, yeah, I've had a student who's, who's studying for a particular exam or a presentation, and they want to work with a native speaker to make sure that they're on the right track. And so before an exam, particularly an IELTS exam, I'll get a student who'll come in and maybe do four or five lessons in a row before their test. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's tiring cool. for me as well as for them. It's it's too long, yeah. really. Of course, um, yeah, yeah. But, but talking about this, so what you mentioned, Ryan, I, I think we haven't spoken about children who are studying. Mm. And a, I have had a lot of children who... Um, are studying material from the textbook that's inappropriate for them. And their parents really should be looking at the content of the material. Um, but also uh, um, that we're, that are talking about um, uh, relationships or alcohol consumption or, you know, just things that you yeah. wouldn't talk to children about. And you asking them questions about things that, you know, like in the conversation section of the Daily News, for example, they don't know, they have no life experience. Cool. And so perhaps their parents need to be looking more closely at the content of the material. Yes, they can read the article. Yes, they can answer the, con- the comprehension questions um, and they can understand what I'm saying, but they haven't got enough experience to participate in the conversation section. So the parents perhaps need to be looking at, um, at, at the content and how relevant it is to their child's learning needs. And there's also children who are studying English and they really don't want to. <laughs> Of course, so, yeah. just yeah. had one. Uh, you know, just just been talking to a student earlier on today, and he was playing with his cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. sometimes um, it, the parents think that you'll be able to engage with them easily, and it's 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 as difficult uh, remotely uh, in their own bedrooms where they're distracted by other things as it is uh, for, for a teacher in a classroom where there's a lot of kids. So I yeah. think um, parents who are, are encouraging their children to learn English, which is fabulous. And I have got some amazing kids who, whose English is unbelievable for their ages, but the material needs to be um, looked at closely um, before they, yeah. their kids sit for 25 minutes trying to think of why after drinking a bottle of whiskey, they might not be able to walk in a straight line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you? Yeah. What do you say? Uh, yeah, I I agree. You can you can you can really tell when a kid does not want to be there, and it's just their parent pushing them. So uh, it's it's on the parent for that one. That if it, you, as a teacher you could be the best or the worst, it doesn't really matter. If the kid doesn't want to be there, then what can you do? Um, but yeah, completely agree about the material as well. It has to be relatable because yeah. otherwise it it's really just words. I know that's all a language is, but you know, it, there's no relation to it. You can't really understand it at all. So it has to be relatable to whoever it is or whatever age. So yeah, yeah completely agree. Also, um, like, like sometimes these really young students will choose free conversation and they cannot speak. It's basically, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, playing yeah. with the cars and just like, just not really talking. So I, I don't really understand that as well. I think from... If the student is not able to properly speak, I think, you know, even five minute discussion where you have loads of topics, um, I think it's just not right. I think they need to really have the basics before, maybe even a bit more because, you know, I like having big in-depth conversations, like diving into people's lives and knowing about loads of these different experiences that they've had and making things very... Yeah, very fun and cool and, and meaningful and um when there's yeah a young student that cannot speak like no effect mm. to anybody thank you for coming to my lessons and thank you for absolutely absolutely but, yeah there's you know you need to know your limits 
And yeah, I think that's that's. The and I I think that's the key is that we're not criticising anyone for um, for not being able to participate or the, not being able to communicate at that level. It's just a discussion that has to be had. I mean, I, I now play games. I play word games. I've, I've now downloaded some interactive word games that I can play with the children so that at least they're practicing their vocabulary skills or and we're playing word games where they need to know the spellings of things. And, and so we're not having a conversation as such. We're having a free lesson. Um, and I've, I've learned to do that over a period of months when I've had a lot of kids will come for a free conversation class and their language skills are very good. But unless you know that child well and what they've been doing, um, it's very difficult to have a, a, a meaningful conversation because by the time you've said, you know, did you have a good day at school? What have you been learning? Who's your best friend? Do you like your teacher? And then, you know, what activities do you do after school? That's one lesson gone. If they come back for another free conversation class, it's like, oh, God, <laughs> what should we talk about this time? Which is why I started Hangman, I Spy, all the word ladders yeah. and things. Um, and they like that. And I feel at least that I'm engaging and they're learning something. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's different, but I think because um, some students as well, like especially five minute discussion like um because that you have to choose basically two topics to talk about um you can do loads of and there's there's, there's like a hundred topics so of course those are really good and you can go through them but then it really depends on the level as well i mean there was um oh god i can't think of that like there's things like um animals and yeah. um you know hobbies dated, yeah hobbies and, and movies mm -hmm. but then they get harder and harder and then you just think God, they're so young, but do they know about these things? So, yeah, yeah I, yeah. Lynn, you, I think you, one you know. of them is orphanage <laughs> or, or orphans, one of the five minute discussion topics. Yeah. And, and uh, I have a, a, a student who's a kid and they just pick a random number and it, you get things like that. Like, so like a 10 year old kid picks orphans as a topic. It's, you, what, how do you talk about that? So, yeah yeah I agree. how do you put it in a nice way like the parents yeah, yeah they're, they're, it's yeah it, it's crazy of course i I, I think i think this is where the parents need to be getting involved in the content of what their children are studying it's all very well putting them in front of a native camp um lesson and making sure that the the um, communication signal works but they should also be looking at helping their child um to to yeah, supervising what they're studying. Can we go on to the third one? topic here? Okay, so unique English expressions, which Japanese students, I have to be honest, I mean, I, I get surprised, but I'm not offended that I've, none of my students have ever used, um, have ever used a, a, a phrase or a saying that I, I've been shocked or surprised at, oh, only in a good way because you know that they've obviously picked it up from a movie or from a book or from listening to podcasts or, you know, they, they've been listening to natural English and have picked up um, certain yeah. words. So, you know, somebody will say to me, oh, by the way, and they, oh, very good. That's very, you know, that's, that's a natural thing that we would say to one another. Oh, by the way, I just remembered. Um, I like to hear that yeah. because that shows that then they, they won't have picked that up necessarily in a lesson. Um, they, they have heard this perhaps in a podcast or watching dramas or that sort of thing. I agree. Um, I, 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 I kind of have the, the same thing. I don't really have problems with the, the phrases that people say. Um, the, the main thing is kind of like the pronunciation, the pronunciation of like people, um, like if we go into detail, uh, if we talk about drop syllables, for example, people like, again, like this is just me saying this is no, no drama. I don't want to offend anybody, but um, people will say things like basically, basically, like this, when in reality, uh, in England, for example, we would say basically, basically, and it's the same with words like chocolate, or like people would say chocolate. I, I find people struggle with those kind of uh, things a lot more, like the pronunciation of words. So mm -hmm. chocolate, chocolate, mm -hmm. several, several. You know, uh, yeah. like those kind of that. That's my take on it. I think phrases. Um, students are quite good with their phrases. I think I never had a. I've never had to say, "Whoa, no, that, that don't say that. Say this." I've never really had that extra. But I think pronunciation is one of the key 
this dropped syllables they need to be um presented in maybe i think maybe there's a native camp lesson where they do that of course but that needs to be focused more i think pronunciation is key the same i've never had any phrase that i'm offended by uh some sometimes casual ones like a student would say oh i'm really pissed off today so like I'm never offended by it, but same same thing that maybe they've picked out from a movie or something. But it's actually in in everyday English is really quite common. But I guess from a teacher and a student, you probably wouldn't promote using that. Yeah, but, um, yeah it's that. normal. <laughs> yeah, um, and some other ones that not not offended in any way. Things that I hear quite a lot is how to say. So I think the Japanese equivalent is nandro or. But then maybe this translates to, in English, they say, oh, how to say. But yeah. how even do you this, say you that? say, yeah. exactly, yeah. So even asking how to say something, they just say how to say. That's a common one. 